Hey, what's going on, guys? I am very excited today to be talking about the first episode of Overlord Season 4. I can't believe it's here. So I gotta admit, this first episode, it kind of feels like the first episode of Season 3. If you guys remember first episode of Season 3, it kind of wasn't doing anything involving the plot, per se. It was kind of just a prologue to reintroduce Ainz to the new situation that he's in at the end of last season. And this season was no different. You know, Ainz is now in Erantel which is now a part of the Sorcerer Kingdom, and he has to adjust to running a country, which, you know, is different for him. You know, before, he was only running Nazarick. Nazarick is filled with everything from Yggdrasil, things he's familiar with. Now, he is officially in charge of New World people and New World things, and he has to learn about it. So, guys, in this video, I just wanted to talk about, like, the things that happened in this episode, and I also wanted to compare them to what happened in the light novel, because there were a few things that were brought up in this episode that are from the light novel and things that were also missed from the light novel. For the most part, the beginning part of the episode hit all the high points of the light novel. The scene I thought was really interesting was basically kind of seeing like Ainz interact with Albedo. Because Albedo's feelings for Ainz has always been kind of like a big point in Overlord and also like how Ainz views not only Albedo, but just basically all the guardians and all the NPCs of Nazarick. And like something that's always held him back is the fact that he changed Albedo's settings from what uh, Tabula had them before. And something that hasn't been touched on in the anime in a really long time is that Ainz feels like really guilty about doing that. And now that Albedo is alive and everyone's alive, he can't do anything to change it. So that's why he's always like held back and kind of like tried to put a stop to these advances because he feels bad about it. Not to mention that also his emotions are suppressed by the system and also I think he's missing the most important bone in Papa Bones for anything to even happen I, I think I don't even know why they keep acting like Ainz can have a kid or something like that like he's literally bones but anyway the beginning of the episode followed the light novel pretty well there was a couple of things though that uh, I wanted to elaborate on main one that I wanted to hit upon was the plot point involving Negretto and Lady Pistonia and this is something kind of really interesting that I wish they elaborated on more uh, during the actual arc during Project Gehenna and the whole eight fingers incident that went on in season two when Demiurge kidnapped all those people within the wall of flames um, in Riestes Demiurge was going to kill kill most of them but he also like subjected a lot of them to like experiments like if he didn't kill them they were going to wish they were dead under Demiurge however Pistonia and Negretto who I don't think Negretto has been mentioned once or he, she definitely hasn't been shown because I feel like I would have known that and remembered that but I don't think Negretto was shown and I actually honestly thought that they weren't going to include Negretto or Rubetto in the anime because I don't think Either of them have been mentioned once. In case you guys are wondering who the hell Negretto and Rubetto are, those are actually Albedo's sisters. They were all made by Tabula, and Negretto is Albedo's older sister, and Rubetto is Albedo's younger sister, who, and actually Rubetto is apparently the strongest entity in Nazarick period, which I think is interesting, but like I said, Rubetto has not been mentioned, but they exist now that Ainz has actually mentioned Negretto, but what happened with Negretto and Pistonia is that they decided to go against Ainz's orders. They wanted to protect the children. They protected the uh, very young children and the babies. And because of this, they were placed on house arrest in the fifth floor, I believe. I can't remember exactly. I think it's the fifth floor. But that is something that was really interesting. It just, it just kind of felt like a throwaway line in the anime. And I felt like we could have kind of explain that a little bit more like earlier during maybe like the maybe not the end of season two because pretty much the Gehenna incident happened and then season two ended but I think it would have been really good to bring that up in the beginning of season three like post eight fingers incident I think it's interesting that you know some of these NPCs aren't 100% gonna follow Ainz's orders they actually went against his orders um, and you know to do what they thought was right and I thought that was really interesting point and then we have the aura and Mare entrance part which for the most part once again was pretty uh, faithful to the light novel one interesting thing that I think was left out and I don't know if they just removed this from the anime or if they just didn't mention it do you remember those three elves that were the slaves for that guy that invaded the tomb I can't 
can't remember his name, but he had like the sword and he fought against Hamsky. In the light novel, those three elves were actually like assigned to be like parental surrogates to Aura and Mare. And Ainz basically decided to do that in order to kind of like assist with their development. And of course I found this scene hilarious. It was really funny. Ainz is developing like complex feelings for the guardians. He, like, you know, he's treating Aura and Mare like, 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 like they're his kids. And you know, she like came out to him and wanted the hug. And I thought that was really cute. And then like also Ainz is complicated, like kind of like emotions towards Albedo. Cause like he mentioned that she was really cute and like he like held himself back. He's like, oh shit, I shouldn't have said that. And all, of course, Albedo just being absolutely insane, which is always entertaining. And there's one other point uh, that I thought was really funny and uh, they didn't really elaborate on it too much in the anime, but the point that uh, Aura and Mare wanted everyone to start cross-dressing because they cross-dressed. This wasn't explained in the anime, but what happened in the light novel was that Ainz basically explained to them that Buku Buku Chagama, who's the creator of Aura and Mare, by the way, but she made Aura and Mare that way because she wanted them to be special, and so they shouldn't do the cross-dressing because, you know, that was what Buku Buku Chagama wanted just for Aura and Mare. That was, like, the reasoning behind it. And, of course, I think the most glorious scene of the episode happened after that with my man Pandora's actor coming back in. Oh, my God. I love Pandora's actor, and I love him even more in the anime because Mamoru Miyano just freaking kills it. His, his voice is just so bombastic. It is so funny to hear. Mine summer. Like just, I love, I love hearing Mamoru Miyano voice Pandora's actor just because it's so funny to hear and watch him do that stuff. And that scene was pretty much faithful to the light novel, pretty much verbatim. Uh, and I really did like the fact that we got more of an interaction with Pandora's actor and Ainz because Pandora's actor is legitimately the only one of the NPC that still has their creator around so I really feel like that dynamic is something that should be explored a lot more and is something that's really interesting and I want to see more of and I think a pivotal moment in Pandora's actors kind of development and you know Ayn's accepting him as his kid like which is really huge to Pandora's actor trying to get him away from his chuny tendencies when when Ayn's, Ayn's made him he was in a chuny phase but I hope he never ends it because I swear every time he's on screen like the entire scene with Pandora's actor just in his in his face and everything he was, he was like oh I'm summer and everything like that I was laughing so hard it was great and I don't know if this is important or not but there was one little thing that they left out in the anime and then in the light novel uh, Albedo has forbidden any of the homunculus maids from entering her room and I think maybe it's because she has trashed the flag of Ainz Ulgon and also if you notice about Albedo at the beginning of this episode she wasn't saying Lord Ayn she was saying Lord Mamonga she actually really resents Ainz Ulgon for leaving uh, Ainz as well as leaving her, all the creations you know they have pretty much abandoned them to their eyes so Albedo has a really negative view towards like the rest of Ainz Ulgon like as a whole and what she actually likes is Momonga, who is Ainz now. But I thought that was something that was interesting and something that I really want them to show more in the anime is Albedo's disdain for the actual Ainz Ulgon guild. But the rest of the episode is pretty much faithful to the light novel um, with Ainz uh, interacting with the Adventurers Guild, wanting to set them into becoming actual adventurers, like adventure, we're gonna go on an adventure, which I thought was like, I don't know why I didn't put two and two together like until I heard that in the episode. I was like, holy crap. That makes so much more sense. He's right, because really, adventurers up to this point had just been, like, huntsmen and, like, security guards. Like, they weren't actually living up to their name. And I thought that was really interesting, you know, because Ainz basically wants to know more about the new world anyway. And there's this one little scene in the light novel where Ainz meets with this group of adventurers. I believe they're called Rainbow. And he speaks to the leader and, like, asks them why they're still there. And it's because of Momon. And that interaction was basically what led Ainz to developing the idea of making adventurers actually live up to their name and be you know start exploring like unknown areas but for the most part guys this episode was pretty faithful to the light novel it looks like they're not deviating too much and they're also adding in things that I wasn't expecting them to do like I said I was really surprised when they threw in the light novel point of Pistonia and Negretto and also the fact that you know Negretto and Rubetto apparently exist in the anime which I did not think they did so this is really interesting that we got two more characters i also really want to see albedo interact with them like i wouldn't mind like some anime only original stuff like coming in this wasn't really much of like driving the overall plot 
forward. It was more of just like an introduction back into Overlord, showing you like this is Ainz's new situation. This is what he has to deal with, you know, and this is like what the world is now that season three, the events of season three happened, and here we are now. So I feel like next episode we're actually going to get like more plot. This is more of just like a prologue. And if you guys don't know this or not, but every light novel of Overlord starts with a prologue. So there's always like a little introductory section in the light novels. And so that's what this episode was, which was showing the prologue of light novel number 10, I think. And I think what they said this season is going to cover is volumes 10 and 11. So we're going to cover two volumes worth of stuff. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this little episode breakdown. I really like talking about this kind of stuff and just like going over the differences. And like, and it seems that everyone's going to be very, very famous for the most part it was just these little tiny minute details that you know it's just like they have a time constraint I'm not angry about any of the omissions there's there's practicalities to making a TV show instead of you know a light novel you can make the light novel as long as you want but with you know an anime episode it has to fit within a time limit so I understand they had to cut some stuff and also just seeing everything animated like this is great and I'm just so hyped <laughs> for more overlord guys like I just oh man this weekly wait is gonna kill me it isn't it so guys I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please hit that like button to let me know. If you aren't already, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out more than you know, and it'll let you know when I post in the future. With that being said, I want to thank you all for watching to the very end of the video, and I will see you all next time. Bye.